Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Getting Color right here on TheBigVitoBrand.com. And I am virtue being joined by none other than the man himself. What's up, Vito? How's everything, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's the B-I-G-B from the L-O-G coming to you live, baby, live here on Getting Color. Virtue, let's get into it. Let's hit the topics. I know we got some hot topics. I know we got some important things to say. Virtue, take it away. All right, well, we're going to start with this, because when we recorded last week's show, the Money in the Bank match was happening as, as we were recording, so we didn't list the winners yet. So guess what? Asuka won the women's Money in the, Bra- Money in the Bank briefcase, and Otis won the man's. Now, there's some other stuff that happened with Asuka's, which we'll talk about later. I just want your take on those two winners, because I felt like there was something off we, I get it. It was gimmicky. It was the WWE headquarters. I was expecting something cool like the Undertaker, AJ Styles, Boneyard thing. And I was kind of disappointed with this. Am I wrong or did you have the same feelings? Something just didn't seem, didn't click with me with that well, Money in the Bank match. And especially Otis is one of the winners. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a quick take on this, guys. And I'm going to say it like this. You know, wrestling fans are fickle. You know, like... You know, like in ECW when they said, you know, okay, what can you do to top this? And every time the guys in ECW and myself included would do something great, they'd say, okay, what else can you do? Wrestling fans are like that. When they saw the Boneyard match, okay, they said, okay. They were looking forward to the Money in the Bank match. They thought it was going to be on the roof. They thought it was going to be something along those lines. Everybody was disappointed. I can understand that to a point, but... They made that Money in the Bank match look like a 24-7 match. I was totally disappointed in it. I did not like it. They made the guys do goofy spots. There was world champions in Vince's office excusing themselves for fighting through the thing. You had Stephanie McMahon make a cameo, which, you know, with all those, fine. They tried, but it was a huge fail because they took it as this can be a comedy yeah. when the Money in the Bank is to make new champions. And, and to be the stepping stone for people to win championships. And they made it a comedy act. It was a 24-7 title runaround match. They got everybody in. They got everybody a payday. It made some sense in some ways, some in not. But you know what, guys? Wrestling, there's one thing about wrestling. When you're working, you complain. When you're not working, you complain. When you're getting a paycheck, you complain. When you're not getting a paycheck, we complain. So what do you do in wrestling? You complain. Go ahead, Virtue. Take it from there. Like, I feel it didn't need Pritchard. It didn't need Laronitis. It didn't need Doink. No. And you're right. The 24-7, like, when you said that, that's perfect analogy. Like, that's how it felt. Now, you know, we'll talk about the whole Oscar briefcase and what it ended up leading to later. Otis, like, to me, I feel like he was just standing there and it fell down to him. Like, I didn't know that was the rules of a ladder match. Don't you have to attempt to go up and grab it down yourself. Like, I just feel like that was just a jacked up screwy ruling that they did just to give Otis, right, an underdog, you know, who's with Mandy Rose now, the briefcase. I think it was, you know, like you have to be get up there and get the briefcase. If the briefcase happens to fall off the hook and falls into the hands of somebody, that's the guy who's got the money in the bank. He used the possession of the briefcase. So, okay, you can, I understand your point. But here's another point, you know, if it falls off and it falls in your hands, hey, you win. It's just like in a hardcore match. If you go climb in a pole and a climb in a pole match and the thing falls down and it's in your hands, are you going to throw it away? Say, no, I didn't climb the pole to get it. So, I mean, you're going to take it, right? So there's Dude, the conversation. I bet you, I bet you he cashes in for the tag titles. It's going to be so hokey. I don't know. We'll have to see. Guys, I think he's going to slip on a banana peel. I think he's going to win a heavyweight title. And somebody like Brock Lesnar is going to challenge him for the title. And he's going to get so steamrolled, it's not even going to be funny. And what better than a 300-pound guy taking suplexes from somebody like Brock Lesnar? That's an exciting, exciting view I have on this. Because right now, they got Drew McIntyre as a champion. They have, um, who's the other champion? Strowman. Strowman as a champion. Strowman, I thought, was a transition champion for The Fiend. But if, if, if it's a three-way match, if now guys, listen to it. Follow the bouncing ball. You heard it here on Gallon Call. Three-way match. Otis comes running in, cashes in on the champion, runs out with the belt. 
He's got the girl. He's got the belt. He's got the world by the balls. And what happens? Brock Lesnar crashes his party. I, I'd see that. I, I, that's, I'll throw you a bone there, Vito. I, that, that passes the virtue test. All right, we'll move on. No more money in the bank. It's been, it no was more a- money in the bank. Okay. Uh, dude, uh, McIntyre now is saying he wants challengers, like the open brand invitation or whatever the hell he's calling it. And look, this just makes me think this brand split's awful, especially when you have certain wrestlers that aren't competing, like Roman Reigns. One other one that we'll talk a little bit about later. What do you think of the brands? Like the brand split to me should be dead. They should merge a couple of these titles. Maybe the the main champions could bounce around on the shows. Those could be your guys and gals that show up on multiple shows. I think this brand split's starting to hurt. I mean, these ratings are dipping lower and lower. I got the perfect answer for that virtue, and I'm going to give it to you right now. Right now, we are working in empty arenas. They are hard-pressed to present something good for the fans. What better way to have surprise challenges from different brands come up and challenge Drew McIntyre? Drew McIntyre has not gotten over in front of a crowd. You don't know what kind of crowd reaction he'll have. I think it's going to be a dead reaction. Right now, he's in a position. He's in a no-win position because he's fighting like a coronavirus. He's fighting through low ratings. He's not bringing up the ratings any. Actually, the ratings are coming down, and he's just in a bad position. I think once the fans come back, you're going to get the real judge of how his championship run is going and inviting people from all kinds of brands. What happens if an NXT kid comes up? You said open invitational. What happens if a tag team comes to, comes to the ring? You said open invitational. That means open. So that means Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre is taking on all comers, doesn't matter who. They have to have somebody to fight for the title. I thought the Andre thing was terrible. It did not look like competition. I think that he needs a little spice to his gimmick. I think he needs a little spice. He's, a, he's got the body. He's got the look. He's got the, he's got the tenacity. He needs to be a little more vicious, but he's doing it in front of an empty crowd, and we're not getting the Drew McIntyre effect. You heard it here. The Drew McIntyre effect. Go. Dude, I think they should just scrap the brand, you know, separation and, you know, maybe keep NXT t- as its own for the most part. Maybe have them trickle back and forth, but just have anybody available Raw and SmackDown. I don't know if this is a USA versus Fox thing and it's part of their contracts, but there, it's just too paper thin to have separate rosters at this point. That's just what I think. But I don't and know. Plus, you could always, you know, what do you say? And plus they're releasing more people, as you see. That's true. I think there was a couple more people released. So you're talking about a roster purge. You're talking about releases. You're talking about them slimming down their rosters. There's not that many good pickings to have, you know, and plus some of the guys who they have, they're all going to AEW eventually. So, I mean, you know, it's definitely an economy thing. It's a world crisis thing. It's an epidemic thing. And right now, the WWE is under the gun. Hopefully, they can pull it together. Now, I've been saying this, and you know this. I said there's only one person who can save the WWE, and that's Vince Russo. And when they get their their minds together and finally give him the book and say, okay, Vince, fix us, I bet you that from 1.8 million on Raw, they will go to 2.8 million. They will not be happy, but they'll gain a million fans. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. Hey, and speaking of like, uh, we talked a little bit about wrestlers not wrestling. We know about the whole Roman thing. Right. Sami Zayn has now taken a stance, and he's not working um, since WrestleMania. And he was the Intercontinental Champion, and they've stripped him of that. They're going to put it in a tournament. Uh, to me, tournaments haven't been exciting in wrestling since maybe the early King of the Rings. The Intercontinental Tournament, when the Warrior had to relinquish his when he beat Hogan for the WWF title, that was the tournament Kurt Hennig missed the perfect one. Could this lead to something good in terms of they'll have the crown a new intercontinental champion. Maybe when Sammy comes back, he claims to be the champ. We can have a little razor Sean ladder match scenario. Or do you think Sammy doghouse buried? We know your take on Roman have at it with this one. All right. Roman Reigns missed, missed WrestleMania. Okay. He has been shunned from the WWE. He's not in any videos. He's not in any pre tapes. He's not in anything. He's not in any advertisement. He doesn't even show up on a commercial. So what happens now? We know that Roman Reigns is in the doghouse, and uh, he's got his work cut out for him to get back. I personally believe that they got rid of him. They silently paying him off. 
They say, you're going to sit on the sidelines. You're not going to be relevant. You are out of the WWE. A lot of the guys who did not want to go on the Saudi trip, those guys have not been booked very well. Daniel and Bryan. Daniel Bryan, for instance. You okay. called it, too, back then when that happened. I called it. And now you're going to see Sami Zayn. He was not coming in to wrestle. So they have no other choice. <coughs> Coronavirus, thank you. Uh, they oh, have good. no other choice, right? They have no, co- no other choice but to strip him from the title. And if and when he comes back, who knows if he didn't get the same fate as Roman Reigns, we're going to pay your contract, sit home, shut up. Who knows? If he does come back, he's going to be job city. You didn't want to play ball with us. We're not going to play ball with you. You're not a company guy. Go ahead, Virtue. Would this classify as the job city then? If So they're, they're going to crown a new IC champ. Yes. Bring him back, let him claim to be the champ, and then job him to the champ. And then release him? Absolutely. Okay, so that could still technically happen, so right. we'll see. All right. I hate we'll- to see it, <laughs> but no, 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 guys, you got to remember, this is the WWE way. This is the culture that's been installed. This just didn't happen yesterday. This has been going on for 30-plus years. If you leave the company, you go against the company, you buck the company, you will come back. You will have your job, but you are not getting any kind of push from us. You are going to get, you are going to suffer your own fate. Go. Now, what did we, who did we talk about last week in terms of real athlete trying to make a comeback in an older age? And we were just starting to hint at it because we saw the videos surface online. You remember who that was? Remember what his name was? Tyson. Mike Tyson. So guess what? Mike Tyson, my favorite boxer of all time, Virtue. I know you got big news. I'm going to let you tell the people what's going on. I get excited when I hear Mike Tyson. Tyson's going to be at AEW Double or Nothing presenting either Cody or Lance Archer with the TNT Championship, which to me is like a television title. But nonetheless, okay, Holyfield's recently supposedly training for a comeback. Now, I don't know if he'll wrestle Tyson. They'll do an exhibition match. What's going to go on? But, like, to me, the Tyson that I see in these training videos isn't the Tyson that was working Holyfield in the mid-'90s when he was kind of like later on after the dominant Mike Tyson of the eighties. And I'm going to go back to Buster Douglas. I think Tyson won that match round eight uppercut Douglas goes down that he was not up ready to go in 10. They let it happen. And then he ends up beating Tyson and knocking Tyson out and kind of a similar situation where he got up up, oh, but the ref said, Nope. So with all of that, Tyson's your boy. What do you think here? I think Tyson coming back because he has a purpose. I think he needs to rectify his career because he did not fulfill his full potential as bringing an undefeated champion. I think if he would have stayed with Kevin Rooney and and, uh, Teddy Atlas, I think he could have been undefeated. I think he could have went 50-0. I think he would have beat Marciano's record. That's how dominant an athlete was. But he chose the road to Don King, and then it went all array there. You think Don King was a problem? I kind of agree. Absolutely, 100%. Don King got in his head, and it was a, you know, you got to stick with us. You wear your people. Get away from custom model Teddy Atlas, Kevin Rooney. But proof is in the pudding. When he was with them, he was the most dominant force in, in, in all of boxing. Nobody could touch him. He went with other people. He went down the tubes. Now that his life is different, his mind is different, I think Mike Tyson can make a comeback. I think he could beat certain heavyweights. As far as him going to AEW and putting them on the map, it's a plug for them. It's a great thing. Cody Rhodes versus Lance Archer. I hope the nod goes to Lance Archer and he gets the victory because he's with Jake the Snake Roberts. They didn't bring these guys in just to be, you know, job. And if you put the title on Cody Rhodes, that offsets everything he did and everything he said. And it made that the boys will be the bookers and the bookers will be champions. Because Cody Rhodes has no business being a champ. And didn't I say a long time ago, there should be a TV title. And what is this? The TNT TV yes. title. Dude, now, in talking with Ty- about Tyson here, you know, we, we know 30 years ago, I mean, he, he's a convicted rapist. And this brings me back to our Del Rio discussion last week where, you know, you, you have to be innocent until proven guilty. And even if you are guilty, like th- there's things like murder. And, you know, rape, there, there are things that you can't, it's hard to forgive people, but what do you think in terms of people getting excited for Mike Tyson to make a comeback? He's a technically a convicted rapist. Is redemption, is 
apologizing, is saying, hey, that was I was in a bad place in my life. Can people be saved? Like, you know what I mean? This is getting color. We got to really talk about this. All and, right, and, 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 and I just want to bring that up because I'm excited if Tyson makes a comeback. You're excited. There are people that would criticize you and me because he's a convicted rapist. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out here, okay? When you talk about people's past, okay? Now, there are guys in wrestling who have been convicted of certain crimes. We don't want to talk about it, right? They paid their dues to society. Let it be. There's no reason to bring up people's past and say, hey, you remember the Mike Tyson interview where the guy brought up that he was a racist? It was like, you know, when he was doing his comedy thing. Yeah. And he said, fuck you. You're a piece of shit. You know what I mean? And he should have smacked the shit out of the guy. And the guy says, all right, you know, we're going to end this conversation. But you brought him on there to make, make good for your, your show. And you're interviewing Mike Tyson, former heavyweight champion. There's no need to bring it up. There's no, we know what he did. Let's put it aside. You, and he went through hurt. the process. He served time in prison. And that's what the snowflake culture does today. They want to condemn people that have served their time and that they're always going to be. Ha I don't like it. Like, I'm a forgiving guy, right? And, and I understand some acts are, are, are uh, I don't even know what I'm more. They're, they're heinous. You sh but God, Vito, like, can't people ever have a second chance? You know, when people look at wrestling, right? I'm not going to mention names because that's not what we do. And I'm not going to pinpoint anybody. There are a lot of guys who did a lot of things in wrestling that weren't right. But do we sit here and judge them or do we judge them for how they treat us? You know, do unto others as they do unto you, right? So if somebody did something to somebody else, he's not doing it to me, I'm going to treat you like you treat me. You treat me cool, I'm going to treat you cool. You be an asshole to me, stay out of my life. I don't want to know you. You talk about... Mike Tyson, because you mentioned his name, he paid his debt to society. You know, he probably learned a hard lesson. He's looking back at his life and he's saying, hey, I need to make this right because I spent a good part of my life being the greatest. And to end it on that note, I know he didn't want to be knocked out by the guy, Mick Bride, who was a big white guy who had no business in the ring with him. And it was a tomato can. He was not in the right frame of mind when he fought Lennox Lewis, when he fought Holyfield, when he fought all these guys. And if he can make a redemption and make his way, God willing, let's just say Mike Tyson makes it back to be heavyweight champ of the world. Are people going to bring up the fact that he was in prison? No, they're going to say he made good. He went back to being the old Tyson. Dude, and he still has a great all-time record with a lot of knockouts. You know what I mean? So it's not like... You know, even when he lost some of those matches, like he's got a horrible record. He's still one of the all-time great boxers. You so know, let's when, he see. Fought, when he fought Danny Williams, right? Yeah. Remember Danny Williams? He lost in four rounds, right? He buckled and tore his knee. He still almost knocked the guy out in the first and second round. Yeah. And he had no power, no leverage. He said, my knee went, and he, tore, and he tore something in his knee. So, I mean, the guy did have crap luck. And when he came back to boxing, right, that was his punishment not to go back to being the greatest of the world. He should have dropped Franz Botha in like two, 10 seconds. But Franz Botha was there with him, and he stayed tough. If that was the old Tyson, he would have wiped the street with him. You think there'll be a Tyson Holyfield 3? Now we know about the ear-biting incident, but like Holyfield, didn't he cheat too? I mean, wasn't he a headbutter? Like he, he was. But the thing why I don't like this fight to happen, and this is I'm going to be straight with you guys. When, when you say okay, there's no knockout punches and you can't do this and you can't do that. You're scared because you don't want to be knocked out. And you're watching Tyson, I'll fight him. Everybody threw their name into fight. Hey, listen, if they say, hey, Vito, you want to fight Tyson? Okay, what's the payday? Oh, we're going to give you like 1.5 million. All right, sign me up, I'll do it. I can use 1.5 million. Am I going to train and protect myself as best I can? You know, could the inevitable be that Big Vito gets knocked out by Mike Tyson? There's a good percentage of it. But... Would I step in the ring knowing full well what I'm in there with? Absolutely. And everybody from James Tony, who's 300 pounds, all these guys who are non-relevant in, in, in boxing, and they're all saying, I'm going to fight Tyson. Bro, you don't want none of that. Just go on with your life. Leave it alone. Next question, virtue. Dude, so if we're going to go from getting knocked out to getting knocked up here. Ready? Right. Becky, Lynch Becky Lynch is pregnant. And this was this is like during her... She's making seven figures. She's she was a Raw Women's Champion. 
you know, we know she's dating Seth Rollins, right? He's going to be the father. He's always kind of been up in the main event. And here's the thing, like I got heat on Twitter and some of my other videos because I, I said, you know, God, this, you, you think she would have, her and Seth could have planned this out. Now we know, acc not accidents, miracles can happen. They could have been taking all the precautions. She still could have got pregnant. It happens. But being in that role that she was in, the office is making it look like they support it. The send off she had on Raw, Oscar, like we mentioned earlier, Money in the Bank winner, is now the Raw Women's Champion because the belt was in the briefcase. It seemed good, a feel good story. The backstage, you know, there's clips on the internet, her and Vince McMahon, like WWE is very supportive. Well, then I hear the promo from Shayna Baszler, and I can't help somebody wrote that for Shayna. Because that's how somebody in the office really feels. Hey, you're making us money. You know, this is a pandemic. We need all the talent we can get. Now you got to go off and be a mom. I, I feel WWE might, as a publicly traded company, support this, make everybody feel happy about it. But deep down inside, they're angry. Seth Rollins could really get hurt from this. If Becky ever comes back, will she ever be pushed the same? This is why I want your take. I wasn't questioning Becky wanting to become a mom, leaving, you know, you get pregnant, you have to go do what you do, right? That's fine, right? I support that. But like, as a, in the role that she was in, I thought if this is something they were planning, she could have told the company, hey, I want some personal time. And then they would have dropped the belt. She'd get an injury angle. She could go do what Rousey said she was going to do, right? right? And I don't think Rousey ever got pregnant. This is just weird that she was champion and all of a sudden, boom, she's out pregnant. And Seth is still on TV. Something's fishy here, or at least in terms of the, what the office could potentially do. What do you think? Like, set me straight if I'm wrong. All right, guys. Here's going to be. You know, in life, and we're talking real life now, right? Yeah. yeah. I've been in a position before my wife. I've been in a certain position. I was a bachelor. And I was dating certain ladies. And they came to me, and they told, and they told me in a certain way, hey, listen, I might be. You know, I, it might be, you know, we have a junior B.I.G.V. In the, in the oven. You know, me being a man, I said, you know what? I said, if that's what it is, I said, we'll get married. I'll take care of the child. I'll take care of you. I have a family. I wasn't going to run from it. You know, accidents happen and things happen. And, you know, life, if you're blessed to have a baby, you accept. That's my view. That's my personal. If the Lord blesses you and said, Vito, you are going to be a father. I'd be like, hey, I'm game. You know, what are you going to do? You're going to say no? You're going to say, okay, I'm game. But that's me. Now, Becky Lynch and, and, and Seth Rollins, okay, things happen. We're in a pandemic. What are you going to do? You're going to make babies. You're going to you're with somebody. You're going to do things. You know, and it happened. So what do you do? You embrace it. You go to the office and say, hey, listen, I'm pregnant. I'm not going to wrestle while I'm pregnant. You know, I'd like to drop the strap. They gave her a great send-off. They did the company thing. Kudos to the WWE for doing the right thing. We said it here on Getting Color. I give them credit for doing uh, an outstanding job of making her look like a great person, a mom, and everything. It has nothing to do with being you know, the money person or whatever. Now, that's on a human side. On the business side, she was the big breadwinner for WWE. Yeah. She was the money. She was the draw. Now, you can't fault somebody for wanting to start a family, and you can't fault somebody to want to have a baby. So if Seth Rollins is going to get the ramification of this, Seth, you dumb bastard, you should have took precautions, you, you ruined our product, you ruined our champion, you ruined things. Now, Seth Rollins doesn't have a good track record. Now, I will tell you why. Yep. First, there was the, uh, Finn, uh, the nude pictures. Yep. Start off with that for NXT. Finn Balor, there was John Cena, there was Sting, and now you have Becky Lynch. That's five okay. things. That's five things in your, yeah. your folder. You know, and they do keep records like that in your folder. Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, Seth Ah, oh, the Rollins folder. Let me, let me. Oh, right? They bring it out. They look it's at decisions stuff. that could affect business by putting exactly. people out. I mean, now, it, it's harsh, but it's true. Now, let's put it like this. I wasn't a fan of Finn Balor being champion. I thought it was horrible. And he got out of there. I was happy. I wasn't happy he lost the title the way he did. But I was happy he wasn't champion. Because he, he don't look like a heavyweight champion. Okay? 205 Live. Right. 205 Live. 
when you talk about John Cena breaking his nose, John Cena has put a lot of guys over, you know what I mean? And being careful. He was a little reckless. He proved to be reckless again when he wrestled Sting. Now, he cut Sting's career short. He cost the WWE money. They had plans for Sting. Yeah, Sting could have had two or three more big Mania matches or, or right. SummerSlam or whatever. He had Sting had some things in the bank, got cut short. Now, Seth Rollins goes out and takes... Plus, Seth Rollins dismembered the Shield, which we I forgot to mention. So his file just got a little bigger. So you're talking about Seth Rollins has been like a thorn in the WWE side for a long time. He's, it cost them money. So now... What do you do to Seth Rollins? He's been, since that time, he has been jobbing and losing and jobbing. He's not the Monday Night Messiah. He's the Monday Night Job guy. And he's yeah, he lost to through. Owens at Mania, and yep. he lost to McIntyre recently. So, guys, what does that tell you? His star is not shining bright, and his entourage is gone. He's not looking as strong as he once did. And if I was Seth Rollins and I have enough money in the bank and I'm going to be a father and I'm going to do it, I would say, you know what? I'm done with wrestling, guys. I am going to go be a father. Thank you very much. I had a great career. Thank you. Both of them have both made millions. They both should have money in the bank. They could live a, a very nice life raising their child. So instead of taking people's crap, you're going to go off into the sunset. Be smart, Seth Rollins. Don't be that guy. You see what happens to all the guys who buck the system. Roman Reigns is sitting home, Right. You don't know if he's fired. I think he got released. He's quietly collecting his paycheck. It's on the hush. He's been shunned. Where well, I think he's going to come back and get mega pushed. That's going to be a big discussion for you and me at some point. Again, at some point. Yes. But now, and then all the guys who didn't do the sorty thing, they've been de-pushed because yeah. they're not company guys. All the people didn't want to uh, wrestle during a pandemic, like Sami Zayn, all going to get get the ramifications. There are a bunch of people who got released. There are a bunch of people who. So this is the this is what you're dealing with. This is not a knock against WWE. It's just the culture and the way they do business. This is not about the human being. I'm sure Stephanie McMahon is happy and thrilled for, um, for Becky Lynch. Yeah, because she's a mother. You know, she's yeah. I'm sure there are women in there and there are people in there genuinely happy. But on the business side, they're not happy because it's not a financial gain. It's a financial loss. And that promo through Shayna, I feel, is the anger of the business side that came through. Yep, definitely 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So you had to have somebody be the heel, put it on somebody who needs it. They did that, so now that girl's got a little bit of steam on her, okay? And, and I don't want to get, like, the Jim Cornette heat. Like, I agreed with his takes on the Becky thing in terms of the business side of things. But, like, when he comes out and he's just a dick, like, you know, it's, oh, you shouldn't become a mother if you're in the wrestling business. And the things he said about Dana Brooke, I don't condemn that. Like to me, women are all, they're beautiful. Right. And it doesn't even, even if it's Nia Jax TikToking, even if she shouldn't be because she's a monster, you know, or, or women without makeup. I, I don't want to be like in that class of, of a dick as Jim Cornette, even though I agree with two up to a point. So I just wanted that. I want to be clear to you with that. And, all right. and to everybody. Here's yeah. my take on the Jim Cornette stuff, right? Yeah. Now to all the ladies in the WWE. Okay. You guys are all beautiful in your own way, okay? You all wrestle in your own way. I get on Nia Jack because she has the potential, the potential, the size, the look to meet one of the most dominant lady figures in all of wrestling. But she, t she took her push, and she decided she was going to be this happy dancer on TikTok. I'm not mad at her for doing TikTok. Or but, a jet ski or motorcycle, whatever the hell that right. one was with Renee but Young. If you're going to be this, this destroyer and this reckless and you know dangerous, you portray yourself. That's wrestling 101. So let's get aside to, from the from Nia Jack. You have Dana Brooke, which Jim Cornette made remarks about her look. Dana Brooke is beautiful. She is a gorgeous lady. She's got a great body. She's got a good face. She's a pretty lady. You know, and her wrestling has improved 150%. Just like uh, uh, Tennille Dashwood. Yeah, you Emma. Know? Emma. Who and she's got that psoriasis issue that flares up. Yeah. And she's still beautiful. I look right through that. So, I mean, guys, you talk about two ladies who I have pushed since the no DQ days. Emma, everybody laughed at me. Dana Brooks, uh, they all me, laughed at me. Everybody else. Everybody else. But 
you talk about guys, I've seen the potential in these ladies, and I've been saying it for three years. These guys could be world champions, okay? And But, you know, for somebody to come out insulting their look, insulting about things, hey, keep your remarks classy. If I don't like you, I've been classy with Nia Jack, and I'm going to tell you why. This ain't about her weight, her look, or anything. This is about wrestling one-on-one. Her character, yes. Exactly. That's all it is. You know what I mean? You know, uh, Tamina Snuka, I wrestled with her dad. I wrestled Jimmy Snuka 10,000 matches, 10,000 times over. I was married to him for every place I went. Oh, I re- you know, Vito, you're going to wrestle Snuka tonight. I said, why can't I go over? And he said, Vito, for some reason, Jimmy Snuka likes wrestling you, and you're the only guy who makes him work, and we want you to wrestle. I was like, all right, no problem. That's good. And it's a true story. Yeah. True story. So it's just wrestling one-on-one, guys. Be classy when you're doing your discussions. Have a heart when you're talking about the ladies. Do it in a classy way. Get your point across. You know what? Maybe Becky Lynch won't come back. Maybe Ronda Rousey won't come back. Maybe some people will shine and and that there's an open spot right now. Okay? Because if Nia Jack played her cards right and she was doing, you know, TikToks to be a destructive ass, she'd be the number one contender for Oscar. And if she came in and destroyed her, who's better than Nia Jack? Yeah, but that won't happen time. right now. That won't happen. Do a great discussion overall. That was a nice power half hour, man. We got that in there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, Big Vito and I grind even when we have technical difficulties. So we make sure we get you getting color each and every week. With that said, you know, you can follow Vito on Twitter at the Big Vito brand. You can follow me at no DQ underscore virtue. Vito, do you want to put any of your plugs in there? Or do you just want me to go ahead and close this show? Because we always got to keep we got to keep them wanting to come back for more. Guys, I want you to keep coming back to the Get in Color because I am the B.I.G. from the L.O.G. And, you know, and if you want to do our social media, go to the Big Vito brand. You know, and if you want to catch us on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash the Big Vito brand. You know, go to the Big Vito brand. You know, you'll see everything. Hit me up on Twitter, on Facebook. Catch it all. Go to, go to No DQ. Check out Aaron Rip's stuff. Check out David, you know, my man Virtue here. Check out everything. And guys, Virtue's going to close it up right now. That's right. I mean, Getting Color goes up on Anchor, goes up on Twitch. You can find it over on No DQ because I post it there. And most importantly, come over to Twitter and ask Vito and I questions, things you want us to talk about on future Getting Color episodes. But this has been another great show right here on the BigVitoBrand.com. And there's the man himself across from me or next to me, depending on how Skype does this, Big Vito LaGrasso, and I am Virtue. And you know what? We'll be back next time. So thank you for watching.